This video is sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. And together they make experiencing Japan from the comfort of your own home possible. You see, Tokyo Treat is a monthly pop Japanese snack subscription box. And in it, you can expect 20 exclusive limited edition and seasonal flavored snacks that are only available in Japan. And Sakura Co. meanwhile is a monthly Japanese artisan snack box, which supports local Japanese snack makers. And with Sakura Co., you can expect 20 traditional, authentic, and artisan Japanese snacks, including teas and tableware. And Tokyo Treat's theme for this month is going to be the Sakura Matsuri Snack. Fest, which means you can look forward to snacks like the Kit Kat Strawberry, Sakura Sweet Tart, Sakura Waffle Cookie, and the Sakura Corinto. Special shout out to the Strawberry Kit Kat. With Tokyo Treat, they're going to be putting in some Kit Kats in there, but I just love this one a lot. The Sakura Waffle Cookie was also good too. And for Sakura Co., the theme for this month is going to be a Night of Sakura, which means looking forward to snacks like the Sakura Cream Cookies, Sakura Castella, Sakura Mochi, Sakura Cashew Nuts, Sakura Yukon, and many more. And as always, this all pairs perfectly well with the tea for this month, which is the Yozakura Blueberry Hibiscus Tea. And I gotta say, this month's tea might be my favorite Sakura Co tea that I've received yet. And the tableware item with Sakura Co for this month is gonna be the Sakura Glass, which I used to pour in the Acerola Cherry Juice that I received from Tokyo Tree. But you can learn even more about the snacks that you'll be receiving, as well as any allergen information that you need from these booklets that they send you as well. So if you're like me and you wanna taste all of this for yourself, or if you wanna give a really nice gift for someone you love, please check out the link in my description and use code Mugiwara to receive $5 off your first Tokyo Tree or Sakura Co. box. A very special thank you to Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. for sponsoring this video, and an equally special thank you to you for watching this video. And with that, we are back to the show. Oh, we just got another subscriber. Is that what happens, Jim, when we get a new subscriber? That is awesome. And you know, speaking of subscribers, uh, look what just came in the mail, because I finally decided to check my email and uh, verify the... Uh, Reward. Look, it came. Oh my gosh. Look. What's up, everybody? We got a new chapter, and I'm excited to talk about it. Um, and as you you might also know that we have a break, a very long break on our hands. And you know what? I'm actually not that upset about it because this, the cliffhanger, well, this was still a pretty big cliffhanger, but I swear I thought it was going to be worse than this. So let's just get into it. The chapter is called The Sun Shield. And you get that pterodactyl looking guy, one of the Gorosei members. I'm pretty sure it's the old Abe Lincoln dude, though I'm not, I'm not sure. I have no idea. This guy is just a big ass bird to me, but he's flying down. Jinbei's face is hilarious. I mean, he's like, what, what is that? <laughs> like, but the first POV is Jinbei and Jinbei is running over to Zoro and Zoro's just, he's breathing. Like, I wish Zoro would stop breathing this hard, man. I, I really do. The, the huff huff thing is just, it's a Twitter meme that's been done to hell, but God is it's hilarious. So Jinbei is running over to Zoro to drag him back to the sunny. And this is when Zoro's like, nah, you know what? I'm not leaving, all right? Because Luchi is still standing. And luchi has got like, I guess, kind of a cool moment. But the funniest thing is Jinbei's response to Zoro not wanting to leave because Luchi is still standing. He just walks over to Luchi and he just, he just gives him some fishman karate. He's like, sorry about this Luchi. And just like, you know what that's like? That's like, you're you're fighting this guy outside of Walmart. You do what is essentially like your finishing move, like your haymaker, but the dude is still standing. Like he's like, you know, I didn't hear no bell, but you know, you're leaving, you know, you can't stay in a Walmart parking lot. Then your friend comes over like, bro, like, what are you doing? Come on, you still fighting? And you know, you're just like, yeah, you know what? I can't, you know, he's still standing. I gotta, I gotta give him the fight that he deserves I guess whatever and then your friend is just like man <laughs> let's go <laughs> like Luchi got stole by Jinbei like Jinbei just ran up punched him right in the face and was like all right let's just go all right he's tired of the nonsense and then literally drug Zoro off and what I like most is Jinbei's like come on Zoro you won like literally let it go the thing that I do hate though is the fact that this pretty much just confirms Zoro was playing with his food the whole time the second he got serious he thought it was over and he was like well I guess I gotta keep fighting him you know like I just know Zoro was like nah see no nah, they're clowning me in the power scaling community, all right? I, I gotta make sure that this is a definitive win, and it isn't. It doesn't even look like the fight's over. I don't think Lucci was going to win, but he still didn't beat him. He didn't beat him. But while Lucci is just crumpled over and in pain, that's when that pterodactyl looking dude swoops down again. And then Lucci's face is just like, what? He's the same as Jinbei's face. Like, what? 
what the hell is this? And the pterodactyl looking dude, he's like, you know, uh, Rob Lucci, where is York and what's going on in the control room? So Lucci's giving the pterodactyl dude like all of the information, like York is here, this is where the straw hats are, this is what they're trying to do. And then he has this request for the guy. He's like, hey, you know, kill whoever you need to, go get York, but just Kaku's up there, my partner, just please, please spare his life. And the pterodactyl looks back down at Lucci and is like, yeah, nah. Like, literally just tells him no and flies off. I really wish we got Lucci's reaction to this because it's like, you, you, this is the team you've been rolling with, Lucci. Like, this is the team you've committed countless unspeakable acts of cruelty for. I mean, you'd better be sure that what you were doing was right, you know? But he doesn't know. It looks like he's just as conflicted as Kizaru. Well, no one looks as conflicted as Kizaru. Adam Sandler is going through it. But I wish we could see him because I think he'd be pretty conflicted too. I mean, why even join the world government, dude? They've got pterodactyls. They've got sandworms that are very clearly from Dune. They've got horses that are also swordsmen. And also, you're not supposed to know any of this. They just send you to this island to murder the world's smartest man. They don't tell you why, and now all of this is happening. Why, yeah, why, why, why would you be loyal to these guys? I just wish we got like a reaction from Lucci so that we could see him process this information and then maybe get some information on like how he's going to proceed forward. Maybe the reason we don't have his reaction is because he's gonna do a wicked face turn later on in the arc. I'm not, I don't know if that's necessarily what I'm hoping for. I feel like there's no way we'd ever look at Lucci like an ally. Like in any situation. Like I think we maybe could be in a situation where we might fight together a little bit. I don't know. I feel like they want to jump him every time they see him. And they, I, I would. That's exactly how I'd feel. But I guess if I'm being fair, like what did Rob Lucci really do that I hate so bad besides threaten Nico Robin? And to be honest, that's enough. That is enough. I'm just trying to see. Because I'm thinking of all the characters I literally hate for either story reasons or just character reasons. Um, mm, nah, screw him. He gave Stussy like a finger gun. No. So let's see, now we get Luffy and Dorian Bragi interacting. I really liked this. I really liked this part of the chapter because they're just like, you know, they haven't talked for a really long time. And now they're here and they're hanging out with Luffy and they even got to talk to Sanji and it's just, it's so great. Like it's, it's crazy that we met these guys so, so long ago and now they're helping us get out of the craziest situation that's happened in One Piece. And then you get some dialogue from uh the gorosei this one it looks like the dialogue comes from the boar dude first then saint spider-man uh saint spider-man saturn fuck you dude i just hate their dialogue because i can only like imagine their voices sounding just really stupid the boar is like giants and then the saint spider saturn whatever fuck you dude is like a most unpalatable complication like wh who talks like that what is what is wrong with you dory and Bragi are just like you know you guys are light work but we really we're just trying to get out of here but that's when uh the giant boar he lets out a roar of what looks like conqueror's hockey i mean there's really no telling with one piece anymore but there's black lightning you know for whatever it is worth there is black lightning so this looks like pretty strong hockey that this guy is dishing out and then something incredibly funny happens like good god it is hilarious. The boar's uh, conqueror's hockey blast roar thing that he does, he knocks the scars off of Luffy and his eyeballs and his sandals, knocks it all off of him and it's just like flowing behind him in this crazy like sea of ridiculousness. Power scalers must be losing their mind. How do you power scale that? Like Luffy has officially become just ridiculous. Like he literally just grabs his eyes and his scars and places them back on his body where they should be. Like that's like who, <laughs> like how is a Kainu gonna fight that? Dorian Bragi block an attack from the giant pig bastard. So Saint Saturn does his venom attack and Luffy warns the giants, but that's when he pulls a tree right out of the ground. He chews it like an episode. I'm pretty sure Tom and Jerry did this or maybe it was Bugs Bunny, whatever. Some old school cartoon definitely did this. He chews on the tree until it becomes a bat. Then he paints it black, which is hilarious. God, I really hope Oda is saying something here. Like, yeah, the, the super secret trick to making your blade black in one piece, you just, you just get some black paint, buddy. That's all you do, all that strength stuff. Yeah, that's just the swordsman being strong. A black blade is just a, is just a black blade. Use, use your brains, people. It was never that hard to figure out. But Luffy knocks Saint Saturn's attack back at him and the giant boar, and then it explodes. So back with the Straw Hats, everybody's pretty much back on the Sunny, and Bonnie is rushing toward the Sunny as well with, uh, I'm pretty sure, Kuma. Um, I think Sanji has Vegapunk. Everybody pretty much is there except for Luffy now, it looks like, because Jinbei has Zoro. So Jinbei and Zoro are not far behind. Uh, Nami, Usopp, Brook, and everybody looks like they're 
they're already at the Sunny. Uh, Bonnie and uh, Kuma and I'm pretty sure Atlas, I think, um, they were with them. It looks like they're approaching the Sunny, so Marines look like they're cutting uh, them off. Um, but it looks like Sanji and Vegapunk are not too far behind as well. Which, now that I've... Is Vegapunk, like, donezo for reals? Like, did Adam Sandler actually do it? It makes sense. That's probably why he's so miserable. Oh, there he is. I just made it back to the panel. The medic is walking over, and it's just like, Hey, Adam Sandler, do you need some help? And he's like, My wounds run deep. Just let me rest already. And they're like, Well, then we need to get him to a doctor right away. Just the imagery... God, it's like, it's very hard to ignore. But wouldn't it be funny if the next chapter, Kizaru just gets up and he's like, well, all right, time to finish killing the Straw Hats. Like, he just doubles down. <laughs> it's like, he buries all of this emotion. And then it just never goes anywhere. And Kizaru just, like, keeps trugging on. It's revealed that this happens to Kizaru every other Thursday. And he's got to psych himself back in to do his job. It, that'd be funny, but I hope not. Something else that happens, the giant pterodactyl, he makes it to, I guess, the lab. And that's where he encounters York. And, of course, York is, like, confused and scared because it's a giant pterodactyl. I mean, you know, she's spooked. But the final panel that we end on is a cliffhanger that is not as bad as I thought it was. But it's still a pretty big cliffhanger, to be honest. Um, the giant robot, he's like like walking towards everybody and he says forgive me joy boy so this giant robot is walking up to everybody asking for forgiveness from joy boy and that's the cliffhanger finally the giant robot is doing something i feel like he's got to be reacting to gear 5 luffy but if that's the case where has he been this entire time like luffy's been in gear 5 for a while he even powered down and then transformed again so it's like i just hate that the the giant robot has just been sitting around this whole time waiting for the perfect chance to get involved so that he could be a cliffhanger like that's that's it unless he's been doing something around the island that'd be sick to find out we come back and then the giant's like hey guys we got to get off the island and here's what i've been doing i beat up blackbeard i went over to uh pirate island i saved your grandpa let's go get vv2 by the way big news morgans they're right above us i think like what if the giant took care of so many off-screen problems he's like oh and here's shanks <laughs> He brings shakes to the island. God, I need to stop because I'm getting attached to this character because of things I want him to do because they're going to be funny. That's the cliffhanger we're on. The giant robot, he's here, but what does he want? What's he trying to do? You know, I, I was going to ask whose side is he on. He's, I feel like it'd be crazy if he was on anybody's side other than ours. Like, what if he woke up and he was like, world government, I found that crackhead. He's over here. Like, he just woke up and started snitching. That'd be ridiculous. But no, he's not going to do that. He's apologizing to Joy Boy. Ooh, what if he's gonna arrest Joy Boy? Dude, no. <laughs> like, he, he's on Joy Boy's side, but he's programmed to arrest him. The Marines woke this robot up and then programmed him to arrest Joy Boy. He wakes up, this isn't right. Run, Joy Boy, run. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's the cliffhanger we're left with. And again, like I said, I thought it was going to be like something ridiculous. I thought somebody was going to pull up. I thought somebody, I didn't think anybody was going to die per se, but I thought something incredible was going to happen. I don't know. I love this chapter though. I really did. The funniest thing overall that happened, Zoro did not low diff Rob Lucci. I think when Lucci was still sanding, Zoro was like, God, they're going to clown me on Twitter. I can feel it. I can see the tweets now. He knew. He was like, listen, Jimbei, just go on with it. It's only going to take one more shishi son son, okay? I'm, I'm going to put him down, and then I swear, to, I swear to God I'm right behind you, all right? I promise. Jimbei was like, I love Jimbei so much. Jimbei was like, uh-huh, yeah. <sighs> Let's go. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to where we go. Uh, I hate that we're going to be on break for three weeks, but, you know, I actually really hate that we're going to be on break for three weeks because everybody's going to be going crazy online, coming up with theories. This is, oh, my God. You know, you know, every time there's a break, I feel like the community gets just a little bit worse, just a little bit worse because we're left to ourselves. You know what I mean? And it just like the worst comes out of everybody. So... Not looking forward to three weeks of this, but um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to get through it together, all right? But that's it for this one, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being interested, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.